What's going on guys, my name is Tista Stutter, and today I have built for you a way to link up multiple cave spider spawners safely and with no clogs, no spiders in corners, and you're never going to get bit. This farm primarily only uses iron bars, fence gates, and a few trapdoors. You're also going to need a few half slabs and maybe a couple pieces of lava. Other than that, let me show you guys how to build this thing. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a 9x9x4 nine by nine by room, leading 4 blocks away from the center of where the spawner is, indicated by these purple and cyan blocks. Then you're going to go 2 underneath the spawner, and you're going to go 1 above the spawner. This is because spiders are actually a little bit shorter, so we only need the 1. Make sure you have the half slab on top, because that's going to prevent spiders from spawning on top of there. Next, you're going to start with a 4x4 four four square on the ground. Uh, one of these corners needs to line up with where the spawner is currently located. After that, go ahead and grab yourself four fence gates and make sure these stay open. All you're going to need to do once the four fence gates are in place is remove all the blue blocks underneath, and then we are going to actually remove a line around the entire outside. What the circle around the entire outside is going to do is that we are going to replace it with iron gates. The iron gates are going to allow us to use kind of a half block, and this will stop the spiders from being more likely to grab onto the edges. It will push them, the water will flow just a little bit over the iron blocks, as you'll see in just a moment, and it just really helps the spiders to not be able to climb back up into it. If you don't have a lot of iron, it's actually not a big deal. This I've tested it quite a lot, and the farm still works without iron blocks in any of these places that you will see them. But I like to put them in just because it makes it a little more efficient. It gets the spiders out of there just a little bit faster. So if we go ahead and switch the difficulty over to hard and we can see the spiders start spawning, you can see they come in, they don't get the chance to even touch a wall. They're immediately flushed into the center of the room and at which point they are spit out. I'm going to do a quick tick warp and this simulates five minutes of game time and you can see that in five minutes not a single spider was able to get anywhere near any of the walls. So that is perfect, that is exactly what we want. After we have that done we're going to need to make an almost aqueduct underneath. Uh, where the water is going to flow is going to be four wide so I'm going to indicate it here with these cyan blocks. This is where my water is going to be. After that, we're going to go three blocks down and we're going to build walls all around this. So here's my three blocks down. Uh, the third block is going to be where the floor is, but we are also going to go around the entire edge of the iron bars. So we don't want any blocks underneath the iron bars, which I've placed. I'm going to actually just remove them all and I'm going to fill in just the corners. So once all the corners are filled in, I'm going to go ahead and speed up really quick, but I'm going to fill in all the floor and all the walls inside this area really quick. So once that is done, next thing we are going to do is go ahead and grab our water. And you're only going to need two sources of water in each of these little aqueduct areas. What we're going to do next is go ahead and block this off. What happened with my water right here is there was an edge, so the water likes to flow. If this happens to you, just go ahead and block it off, cause a block update, and the water should fill back in. What you ideally want to see is the water making this V-shape, and this V-shape will make sure that the spiders always stay in the center of the water. They won't be able to drift to the sides or anything like that, and this will keep them from ever being able to climb walls. I'm going to finish filling in the edges here. It's a little tough to see because all the spiders are standing on it, but what you're ideally looking for is these two edges. It should be seven blocks from where you placed your water source. You should look for the two edges hanging out. This is where you're going to start placing your fence gates. What the fence gates are going to allow you to do is to allow the water to stop, but at the same time, be able to push any spiders through, through the gap. Next, we're just going to pretty much rinse and repeat. We're going to go down a block, and then we're going to start building out, and we are going to 
just cookie cutter this exact idea where you're going to have the four wide block in a V shape with the fence gates at the end. Uh, you can even go ahead and do 90 degree turns with this and link up multiple paths into the same area. So here's a couple quick scenarios. Say that you wanted to connect a water bridge that is a little bit higher up than your actual path. All you really need to do is make sure that just make sure that you leave about five or six spaces of iron bars after the last corner of water. This will just make sure that anywhere you put the spiders in the water, they have plenty of chance to drift back into the center just in case they get hit. And that'll pretty much stop any spiders from climbing up a wall or anything. Other than that, anytime you want to connect two of these together, just Make sure they have enough space afterwards that you're not going to get in any trouble. Uh, another thing I wanted to show really quick now that I've shown how the water works is that if you are you cooking up normal spiders, I would do a five wide water bridge underneath and a three by three water on the top. Otherwise they should get straightened out when they get back into the four wide waters. So what we're going to start on next is the killing chamber. This is going to be a 5x4 area, in my case. I'm going to start by going out two red, and then over two yellow, and then end with one red. On the front side, it should be one red, two yellow, and then one red. The colors don't matter, it's just kind of a nice indicator. You can see it's going 5 out, and then you can see it's going 4 across. After that, I went ahead and just switched these out with blue just so it looked nicer, but then we're going to go ahead and place water sources in each of the corners just like we did before, and there you can see any spiders that fall into this area should immediately pushed, be pushed to the front. After that, we're going to put top half slabs on a 4x4 area right above where all the water is. After that, you're going to go ahead and grab your trapdoors, and we're going to line the edges with the trapdoors. Now, I am placing my trapdoors facing inwards. This is because later on, once you kill a spider and it might drop something on the edge, you can go ahead and open the trapdoors, and it'll actually flip the item back into the collection area, which you won't have to get bit by a spider or anything to go ahead and grab any built-up items on the side. After that, I'm going to go ahead and plug up my water sources for a minute, just so I'm not getting pushed around everywhere. And then after this, we're going to start working on our collection area. I'm going to remove one row underneath, and I'm going to replace it with any type of stair. Pretty much what the stair is going to do is going to allow us, once the water is back in the corner, that one gap should allow items to flow through and experience but not spiders. There you can see the item was able to fit through the gap, and with a few more modifications, no item should ever get stuck inside this gap. We are going to end up waterlogging these stairs next, so we're gonna to need to place blocks on all sides. I'm gonna start with four underneath and one on each end, and this will prevent water from spilling out the sides, anything like that. Once that is done, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some more iron bars and we're going to leave a one wide gap in between the stairs and where we're going to place our iron bars. Now, in this example, I went six wide. Um, you're actually only going to want four in the front where the red, pretty much between the two red blocks is where you're going to want your iron blocks. Later on, I did notice that items were getting stuck there. Um, so go ahead and just match up four and four where these iron blocks are. After that, what we're going to do next is go ahead and grab some more water. Grab your water bucket again, and we're going to waterlog all of these stairs underneath. So this will allow any items that fell in that gap that was on the stairs to be pushed out of the gap, and they will hit the iron bars and then fall down. So here's a quick example of what it should look like. Here's an item going through. You can see it hit the iron bar and it fell down. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Next, we're going to need another water collection. So let's go ahead and figure out where we're gonna place this. Place some blocks right underneath the iron bars and then one more set of blocks right on the outside. You can bring it out just a little bit to the side. We'll get back to that in just a moment. 
So next we are going to, I'm going to use glass in this example. You actually really won't see into this area, so you can use normal blocks. But for the example of me first showing you how this water works, I would like glass inside of here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and place my blocks. And now I should be able to place a water source over in this other corner. And now any items that fall into this area should now be flushed over to the left side out of the contraption, allowing us to pretty much pick up any item that then falls into this gap. Perfect. Try it again. And there you go. So all we're going to need to do after this is go ahead and loop this corner around. I'm going to make a wall right here, and I'm going to bring this out just a couple more blocks. Um, that's not quite where it should be. I'm going to fill in this corner and I'm actually going to go ahead and move my water source block over one more to the side. Pretty much what this is going to do is just give me that one extra block space and any items that fall on there are still going to get flushed away. After we have our water source in and it is away from where we're primarily going to be standing, we are going to go ahead and grab ourselves a barrel or a chest. Ideally, if you are large scale, you can set yourself up a sorting system here. But in this case, I'm just going to put in a hopper and a quick barrel. Going to block this off so nothing can escape out of there. And this is pretty much how the collection area is going to work. Any items that get swept away into the stairs should fall down, hit the rails, fall underneath, and now get pushed into the hopper, collected inside the barrel. Next, I'm going to go ahead and surround the edges with a orange and green pool. Pretty much the green indicates where you are going to be safe to stand, and the orange indicates where you're probably going to get bit by spiders. Now, there's two main ways that I like to stay away from the spiders. First being trap doors opened. I find they're very effective at keeping you away, but they don't match up very well in the corners. So after that, I'd move to iron bars, and I like the idea of iron bars around the edges a lot more. You can still get right up to where you need to be, but the spiders are generally never going to bite you. Now I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these trapdoors and finish putting up a couple more iron bars. And as you can see now, we should be able to push ourselves right up against the iron bars. But in the case that spiders are actually inside of there, they will not bite us. I'm going to go ahead and put a little layer of glass just around the edges. This pretty much just makes it easier for me to stand on. Next, we're going to put a trap door right above this water source. And I'm going to remove this line of glass, even though I just put it down. And aesthetically, I like to kind of make these stairs. But it's kind of one of those finished product things. It's I don't like this trap door to be on a different level than everything else. I don't know why where a lot of your XP is actually going to end up going, so I don't like it too hidden away. I like it to kind of be level with the ground outside. But that's just me. I'm also going to go ahead and change this front bit out with glass. This will just allow you guys to see inside of here a little bit easier once the spiders do start spawning in. Next, we're going to need to work on a killing chamber. This is more of a killing chamber that sometimes when you hit the spiders, they will like to kind of run away. I don't know if they just wander off or if they try to path like a long path around to you, but sometimes they will come back and they can get up in specifically this main area right here. So how I dealt with this is I went ahead and made a box of glass around and I just filled above these fence gates with lava. Now any spiders that crawl in here will instantly die. This is a quick modification I made later on I wanted to show you really quick. If you go three blocks out from where you place the lava and you place iron gates, I was having a problem with a few spiders still climbing back up. But uh, You can see in this case that once I put in those iron gates and made it three blocks away, the water will actually push them back down. This is the case that it is completely overrun inside there. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm sure you can hear it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a lot of spiders inside here right now. Um, 
if you happen to get it this full, generally you wouldn't if you're kind of actively using it. But if you did, I want to be safe and make sure no spiders are coming out and attacking you or getting stuck in any corners, causing lag, holding up mob, mob caps, anything like that. Here you can see me just swiping a few spiders and flipping trapdoors to get the items to fall in. So I was having some more problems with kind of the items getting backed up at the front after I was killing a large amount. So I found a solution where I actually ended up moving the water out two blocks farther to the side. So this is a compact killing chamber. If you had it the full seven blocks away, I don't think you would run into this problem. But since I made mine a five by four instead of a seven by four, um, I did run into this problem. But once I moved the blocks one space away, it ended up lowering the center two blocks of water and you can see that now pretty much no items ever get jammed up in there. They all fall in, they flow, they go right to the middle, they can sink down low enough to fall into the stair and get flushed out of the system. Um, a quick example of what you want your water to look like in there, if I went ahead and knocked out half of it, here you can see that the water flows straight over to the two blocks but it doesn't flow over to the two on the other side. So that's ideally what you want. After that, go ahead and block up the water with some glass, and that pretty much will just prevent any possible spiders somehow crawling up the water, because spiders are the peskiest mob in this entire game. So once you have that, I'm going to go ahead and fill this back up. And unless you're doing hardcore, this is completely safe and operational. Now, if you are in a hardcore world and you want to be extra, extra careful, go ahead and block off all the tunnels pretty much. And then you can also go ahead and make another little lava chamber right here. And this will pretty much guarantee that any possible spider that makes its way back up, if you happen to, I don't know, DC, but you stayed log in, I don't know how that would ever happen. You went AFK for a long period of time is more reasonable. And somehow this was absolutely filled to the brim with mobs. This will prevent any other mobs from being able to escape out and we'll catch them inside this area. You probably don't need it, but it might save somebody's life, so I figured I would include it. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a quick example of all the spiders flowing in and what it'll look like to actually slice them up. So I'm now just going to do a quick tick warp again, and you can see spider is flowing straight into the system, and they're having no problems. They're all going straight to the killing chamber, where I can then begin swiping them with my sword. Now occasionally, you can, if you're active about it, watching, you'll start to see some of the spiders straying away, like this guy right here on the side. And you can actually sometimes run over and still catch them before they get up to the lava. You can see the majority of the XP that doesn't get picked up by the player actually ends up getting swept away in the water and ending up right above this hopper right here. Then all you have to do is go ahead and make your way on top of this trapdoor and your player will continue to pick up any experience that was missed not picked up by swiping spiders. If you found this tutorial helpful, please uh, consider liking the video and if you have any critiques, any comments, anything like that, you know where to leave them down below. And if you guys have any ideas for outdated kind of mob farms, things like that, something that needs just a quality of life update, pretty much the reason I made this video was because I had never seen anyone that made a mob spider farm, uh, linking multiple farms where spiders didn't get stuck in any corners or anything. So that was my whole inspiration for this. If you guys have any problems that you run into on a daily basis that you would like to see a creative solution for, let me know in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. Helps give me more content for you guys and helps solve your problems. If you would like to see your skin used in any of my videos going forward, comment your Minecraft name down below and I will spawn in your player just like I did a Snickers bar in this video. And who knows, maybe you'll be in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.